Hi everyone. Luke Heck, Matthew Swift, Benjamin Blackford, and I, Katya LaRue, are Team 22, and the following is a presentation on our design project for the HCCI VCR engine. This presentation will provide a brief explanation of the engine, define the scope and various design criteria, and discuss possible design alternatives and the evaluation process followed to generate a final solution. To start off, what does HCCI VCR stand for? Homogeneous Charge Compression Ignition Variable Compression Ratio. What does that mean? Let's start with the first term, HCCI. HCCI engines combine characteristics of both gasoline and diesel type engines. Like a gasoline spark ignition engine, the fuel and air are premixed prior to combustion, making a homogeneous mixture inside the cylinder, hence the term homogeneous charge, HC. However, the combustion of the air fuel mixture is caused by compression like in a diesel engine, hence the compression ignition term, CI. As a result, you get the low emissions of a gasoline engine and the high efficiencies of a diesel engine. What do they mean by variable compression ratio? VCR, VCR engines allow for dynamic change of the volume above the piston in the cylinder to be changed, enabling variability in the compression ratio, which in turn permits higher fuel efficiency. Roberto Finero's design combines the two concepts just explained to obtain the HCCI VCR engine, also known as the Finero engine. It is a new type of rotary engine with a fuel injector and exhaust valve, and two gates for the compression and expansion of the fuel-air mixture. Our scope for this project is to provide alternative solutions to the current mechanical design for the gate actuation system in the first prototype. The section in question is highlighted in yellow in the current image of the engine. In order to quantify a successful design, a number of requirements needed to be filled. The rotor positional mechanism must be accurate to within one degree when the engine is turning at 3600 RPM. It must also be able to withstand temperatures in the range of 150 degrees Celsius. The gate actuation system must move the gate the required 10 millimeters in less than a 90 degree rotation of the rotor, which is approximately four thousandths of a second when the rotor is spinning at 3600 RPM. In order to improve efficiency, it is important that the solution minimize the use of the engine's power to activate its gates. The design must also be both small and light. Finally, in the result of a system failure, the design must ensure that the gates are in the up position so as to prevent the rotor from smashing them. The first two designs that were considered were purely mechanical systems. The revised system features much larger cams that are attached directly to the drive shaft. This eliminates the timing belt which significantly decreases the failure rate. This also adds an undesirable amount of reciprocating weight. The second system features a single camshaft above the gates that is belt driven and much smaller than the current design. This system is very similar to one that would be in a standard piston driven engine but lacks the required failsafe of ensuring the gates be open in the event of a failure. The final two designs were systems that did away with cams altogether. The first used an electromagnetic rotational position sensor coupled with hydraulic or pneumatic actuators. This allows for incredible variability and also removes a number of bulky rotating parts. The second camless solution is very similar to the first but instead uses magnetic gate actuators. This has more or less the same benefits as the hydraulic or pneumatic solution but is slightly heavier. The selection process for finding the recommended design relied heavily on a weighted evaluation matrix. As specified by the client, cost and reliability are the heaviest weighted factors. Size, weight, timing variability, and ease of implementation were also considered to a lesser degree. While typical mechanical solutions outperform the camless designs in upfront costs, the camless solutions have much higher scores in variability, weight, and size. Because of these advantages, the electromagnetic sensor with hydraulic actuators were found to be the highest rated design and was chosen for recommendation and implementation. This solution consists of two parts, an electromagnetic sensor used to detect the position of the rotor in the cycle, and the hydraulic or pneumatic actuator, which would physically move the gates up and down. Bridging these two components is a CPU unit, which can be used to vary the gate timing and ensure that in the event of a system malfunction, the gates default to a risen position, out of the way of the spinning rotor. A controller unit already exists for the variable compression ratio section of the engine, so the proposed design can piggyback off of that controller, reducing cost, size, and weight. Companies such as Freevalve are dedicated to programmable, variable valve timing. Just like our design, Freevalve uses electrohydraulics to sense and activate valves. In testing, Freevalve systems were found to have a 12 to 17% reduction in fuel consumption and have been successfully implemented in the Saab 9-5. Recently, 
Fiat has also utilized a hydraulically activated variable valve timing engine in their mass-produced Fiat 500 model cars. The engine, dubbed Multi-Air, won Best New Engine of 2011, an award judged by a panel of automobile journalists from around the world. While valve control and gate control are not identical systems, they are very similar, and the success of these designs are very promising for the team going forward. Our economic analysis looked at three cost factors. Production costs include those involved in physically producing the design system. Operating costs include ease, ease of replacement. And return on investment looked at energy savings from increased design controllability. Production costs were broken down into raw materials and manufacturing costs. The table presented displays our preliminary estimates for the main components of the proposed solution. These components include an electromagnetic sensor, pneumatic solenoid actuator, and a fluid compressor. Since there are no camless engines currently commercially produced, we broke down manufacturing based off three main cost drivers. These factors include materials and supplies, energy, water, and vehicle fuel, and workers' wages. Our research indicated that materials and supplies is by far the lar largest contributor and therefore our raw materials will have the largest contribution to overall production costs. Now we are going to take a look at operating costs. We looked into two different types of operating costs, life to expectancy and cost of replacement. The lifespan of both the electromagnetic sensors and actuators are largely dependent on application rather than design itself. For our operating conditions, we found solenoids have a range of life expectancies. A heavy duty solenoid can last up to 10 to 12 cycles, or under our operating conditions, 4.5 million hours. An advantage to using a hybrid system is that in the event of a failure, they are easier to replace as they are added and removed as an entire unit. The disadvantage is that the components cannot be replaced individually, and therefore it will cost more. In terms of return on investment, Despite having a larger upfront cost, you can have a larger return on investment based on easier part maintenance and increased fuel efficiency due to variability. Moving forward, the next steps in our project include developing the proposed solution into a more concrete and detailed design, which includes a final CAD model, sourcing parts for the proposed solution, expanding on all alternative solutions, which includes researching pros and cons of each design, Reevaluating all solutions to make the most accurate suggestion to Mr. Finera, and making a table of alternatives considered and their pros and cons to present to Mr. Finera, with a more detailed section on the proposed solution. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you very much for listening.